Howdy howdy, and welcome to the Tea Weasel, where we pair teas with movies for your enjoyment. I am your hostess, and today we'll be looking at... Get out of town! Buckaroo Bonsai! Huh? I like it! I like Buckaroo Bonsai! Oh, thanks! <laughs> it's great! Yeah! You look... Oh! You look awesome! Thank you! Wow! That's right, you guessed it, 2018's Ready Player One, a tribute to all the fandoms, and a commentary on large structural and environmental issues that don't get fixed and kind of forgotten by at the end of a movie. So I want to try something different for this video. Typically I talk a lot about the movie in the beginning and then a little bit about the tea at the end. But this time, I want to try talking about the tea at the beginning, and then I'll talk about the movie some at the end. Let me know how you like this format, because I want to make really good videos with a good balance between tea and movies, two of the things I really like to talk about. So any ideas of improvement, please let me know. So, here we go! So as I mentioned, Ready Player One is basically a tribute to all the fandoms. So... Call me Sophia Nygaard because I'm making a Franken tea. What I'm going to try to do is combine all the teas that I have into one mega tea. Drink. Thing. How I plan on doing this is by adding five cups of water, bringing it to a boil, and then adding in all the tea at once, and then removing them tea by tea based on their steep time for each one. The first thing you want to do is get your water to the point where it screams. Most teas need to be at boiling temperature, so once it's there, remove it from the heat and pour it onto the tea leaves. By pouring the water onto the tea, you help avoid scalding the leaves. If they become burnt, it gives it more of a bitter taste and nobody wants extremely bitter tea. Here I have a pot full of the tea bags. I've lumped them all together based off their steep time. So as you can see, I'm pouring mine in a clockwise manner. You don't have to do this, I'm just doing this to be bougie. Typically for green tea, you want to seep it anywhere between one to three minutes. Hoji chai and jasmine tea are also considered green teas, so I put them next to it. My hoji chai is loose leaf, so I put it in its own little bag so I can take it out when the time comes. Just to clarify, jasmine tea does not actually come from the jasmine plants. It is green tea that is infused with the scents and flavor from jasmine. It can be green, white, or oolong tea. So make sure you read what the instructions say for the steep time prior to making your jasmine. Once the one to three minutes has elapsed, remove all the bags. I tangled all the tea bags and strings together so they could easily be removed, for the exception of a hoji chai and jasmine, which were in separate containers. Once the green tea has been removed, put the lid back on the container and let it seep for an additional two minutes. Black tea typically seeps anywhere between three to five minutes, so adjust the time as need be based off how long you let the green tea sit. Lastly is any herbal teas you have. Their time can range greatly based on what they are, so make sure you check the instructions prior to making this. The mint and chamomile tea bags I had said eight to five minutes, so I put mine in for eight minutes before removing them. At that point, I also removed the bag that had the butterfly PT, rose petals, and lavender. 
and then give it one neat little store around to get all the flavors incorporated better before trying to decide on the ultimate fandom cup. For me, it was pretty easy. I bet you'll never guess what my ultimate fandom is. Howdy, howdy. So here we have the Ready Player One tribute to all of the fandoms, all the teas I have. Cup of tea. <sighs> Smells good. It doesn't particularly smell like any one tea more than I thought it would. It does have a little bit more minty flavor than I expected though. Not, not flavor, smell. Very, very minty, even though I only put one bag in. And really bitter. Yeah, I really don't taste much tea. Like, I get a good amount of mint, a little chamomile since there's a chamomile bag in there. What's the other taste? Yeah, that, that's really it. Just mint, chamomile, and maybe a little lavender? Yep, lavender. Lavender and the Butterfly PT, which really doesn't taste all that great. So it basically tastes like mint and flowers. I probably should have added less of the petals. Either way, it's a great tribute cup to all things nerdy. Oh well, back to you, other me. I am about to talk about the movie, so break out your spoiler-proof mugs in case you haven't seen this movie, or your regular cup if you have seen this movie, or just don't care about spoilers. So this movie, as I have said several times now, is a tribute to a lot of fandoms. And I mean a lot. There is a whole lot of little things hidden in the background of this movie that makes it really fun to watch. Unfortunately, that's where it kind of stops. It doesn't pay a lot of tribute in itself to the fandoms so much as it does just kind of put them there. Not everything needs the, hey, it's blank, I love blank kind of statements in the movie, but adding a little bit more would have helped add to the nerd fluff to the film and kind of help make it more of a praise rather than just a I spy movie. Like the Iron Giant vs. Mechagodzilla was really cool and fun to watch when it wasn't being heavily cut. But that's where it kind of ends. Iron Giant, he didn't really have any references to him other than that. Yes, I know Iron Giant is a robot and therefore technically genderless. But he calls himself Superman, so yeah, I think he's a he. When Iron Giant was melting in the lava, all he did was a thumbs up, which is a reference to Terminator, another good movie, but not to Iron Giant. He could have said not a weapon or Superman, something about his movie, but they didn't because... because... In the very beginning, when Wade starts narrating and is saying how people kind of gave up on the world and society, that seemed like the main issue of the film. But it just completely gets dropped after that. At the end of a the movie, there's no real progressive changes in the movie other than the Oasis is closed on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I really hope those aren't the only days people can get on. 
Wade, himself the main male protagonist, doesn't even really have a major character growth. Yes, he does kind of become more of a leader. Granted, I would say he's always been a leader, just he never had the opportunity to lead until the movie. He did say several times he didn't want to clan up, but later discovered his group of friends kind of are his clan, so I guess that could count. He also found true love, if that counts as, you know, character growth. Samantha, or Artemis, I would say actually did show some growth. She learned self-acceptance after being told by Wade that her birthmark is no big deal. Yay. Steven Spielberg is an amazing director, and without him, this movie probably would not have been as good. The writers did a good job, too. It was written by Ernest Klein, the person who wrote the novel and helped with the screenplay, and Zach Penn. For those of you that don't know who Zach Penn is, he has worked on a lot of Marvel movies, ranging from fantastic ones like The Avengers, to okay ones like X-Men Last Stand, and really bad ones like Elektra. So yeah, he has a bit of nerd movies under his belt. I just wish between the writers, Stilberg, producers, they would have put a little bit more time into the nerd worship side of a culture versus just the Easter egg hunting you can do by watching a movie about people who are hunting Easter eggs in a movie. All in all, this movie's pretty good. The acting's great, the graphics are great, the editing for the most part does a great job at helping build spatial awareness between characters, and there's not, not much to complain about, other than some like plot hole issues. But if you're dating a big nerd, or you yourself are a big nerd, this is a perfect date night movie. Both of you can watch the movie at the surface level, not looking at the background and enjoy it, or pause the movie like every three seconds and be like, hey look, it's insert character. I love insert character. Anyways, there is a link in the description where you can rent or buy this movie. And until next tea time, watch a movie and have a relaxing cup of tea.